Um, yeah, I've been in GIS for God knows how long because I'm getting close to 80. Um, and um, I couldn't get any work a few years back and so I decided I'd take on the heritage people and uh, try and work with them on projects. And someone asked me, could you map the shops, changing the shops in Rumuera? And I said, yep, that's about 10 minutes work. Uh, I'll do that for you. And five years later, I'm still with them. Uh, it's the most fascinating area. Uh, and it extends over a whole lot of things, and I've got an idea for next year's conference already. So, um, the Maori Feast, um, it was in um, 1844, and um, the woman I've been working with at Rumuera Heritage is uh, Sue Cooper. And uh, now, is this on or off? I don't think it's on. I think it needs to happen. I'll use that one. Oh. Just okay, that one. Okay, good. Yeah, um, I mean, when I was asked to give this uh, talk and do this work for Rumira Heritage, sort of people said to me, what the hell does it matter? You know, this thing was 178 years ago. And of course it really matters uh, because... Um, I can't get this to... Not having any luck here. <laughs> Worst case is you can just hit that button. Just hit that. Okay, good. Yep. Because it's, it's got a lot about Maori culture. It's got a lot about politics, which I can't go into today. Uh, but um, whether you want to know the specific site or not, um, you know, there's a question over that. And there's been people trying to find this site for quite some time. Um, I'm very much into geography. Uh, that's sort of what, where I had my career. Uh, and, um, you know, the people are at the heart of geography. And so, therefore, it's important for me to try to find out something about this site. Um, and it's, I'm also into place. Place is becoming much more a thing in um, presentations and books. Uh, and those two things combine to tell us so much about people and culture. And what they ask me at Rimuera, because they always, anything I do, they think is marvellous because they have got not a clue about geospatial. Uh, so they ask me, have you got something in your little box of tricks that can show us something about this site? Um, the audience I have is usually between 65 and 92. Um, some of them do fall asleep, I've had that happen. Uh, they're definitely not technical people, uh, but they are right into visuals. So anything that you can put up and describe very simply and do something with, they love it. Um, when we started this project, um, really we, we started with virtually nothing but a, a painting or two because there was no eyewitness reports. Uh, there were some odd newspaper articles. Uh, some of the stuff that was written actually was written in the 1930s. So, you know, it's getting a, b a bit... Um, down the track. Um, but looking in papers past, we found bits and pieces, um, and then starting to get into the type of thing that we've been doing, trying to do a bit of the spatial analysis uh, is sort of part of the deal. But the main thing that the problem you have, of course, uh, which we've just seen the LIDAR and that, and the current, we're dealing with something that's 175 years ago where there is no LIDAR, there is nothing. Um, there are a couple of maps, uh, and we try to do the best we can with that. Um, I'm an out-of-the-box QGIS person. Um, that's what I sort of do. Um, I'll show you what happened to my DEM experience during the week. Uh, but um, I use it a lot. I've used it a lot in various um, things. Um, this one is predominantly using Auckland Council's data through the LINS DEM. Um, and using those particular functions, particularly the three J's, because that gives me the pictures that people want to see. That is the original artwork that we had to work with. Um, it had nothing on it. Um, it just showed a few mount a couple of mountains, 
um, and no indication of anything. Uh, there were some bits and pieces and papers that sort of supported what we want to do. But uh, Joseph Jenner uh, actually sent it off to get it um, done into a, um, a LIGO graph. And we don't, we can't, I've tried through London Museum, etc., to find information about this and haven't been able to. Um, but they actually started to label it and they labelled that Munger there as Mount Hobson. Um, a couple of other things, Mount Eden there, um, uh, Three Kings over here, um, and a place called Captain Scott's Farm, which took a lot of research to actually find where that was. So it was sort of next to this Mount Hobson. You might put Great South Road, if you know it, somewhere along there, not entirely correct in Market Road. Dilworth College would be somewhere about there, given that uh, those names of those mountains and um, swamps were referred to of course by Hochstetter and they've added a swamp in here which wasn't there but that's been rather handy to try and look at but what where was Remuera? No maps, no maps, nothing, nothing even though uh, the British were here there's nothing in the British Museum uh, but one statement said it is somewhere between Mount Hobson and Mount St John so uh, it's in that flat area um, by Dil uh, Dilworth College. Um, another one mentions uh, the same two mountains again. Uh, I just look at that word Hakari. Um, it's, um, this is the, um, it's got a, either meaning of feast or structures. Um, I've, I've got a book on it and if anyone's interested I can put you on to it. Um, the other thing that came up was that it was um, this natural amphitheatre uh, and that's one of the things that gave us a clue as to where this might have actually been. The predominant thing I've used is this uh, DEM. Unfortunately, my ageing computer, like me, is slowing down. And I can only work it in two halves, but it does work. Uh, and it gives me the pictures that I need. Um, so when they look at that sort of thing, if you put a few labels on it, people sort of go, ah, ah, ah. But Rotating it really gets them worked up and when you drop something like a 1940 photograph over the top That's sort of the cream on the cake for these people. Uh, that's another project where that actually happens So you've got the uh, three mountains uh, in there uh, Te Kaupuku, Mogafo and um, Ohinaro and, um, and then you can sort of see Rimuera Road Ridge there So we're sort of looking in an area somewhere there I thought I'd do some slope analysis uh, because it's, it was described as a flat plain, um, a mile long. Uh, now, mile, I don't think anyone measured it, but trying to, uh, that, that there gave me an idea of initially of some of the slopes that we would be looking at because I find that the 3D terrains, they actually accentuate things that look flat because of the colours that you end up giving them. Uh, so that's sort of the area there. Uh, those are the mountains that we were talking about. Uh, and then I did a ruggedness index, uh, which takes nine uh, centroids and then relates them to each other. And that gave us something. I, I put the flats in z uh, green there. Uh, but the blues, probably, the light blues, probably would be uh, somewhere where we might start looking as well. Um, so those looked like a couple of likely areas for our site. That one definitely wasn't going to work, uh, but I'll talk more about it. Um, and those there uh, would be sort of the lines where you might sort of think that this might have occurred, this feast. Um, that's, um, those are the three sites that are predominant. Um, the one, Mangarahiri um, at uh, Little Rangatoto, I've just wiped that out on the basis of... Um, of, of uh, slope in particular, the Dilworth College, it should be area there, and, and one up there at um, Mainston Road. So if you don't know Auckland, that's, that's roughly where we're, we're working. Someone gave us that that would be one of the sites. When you look at the DTM, even though today's one, uh, you know, there's no way you could have this feast there. Uh, and there's a possibility that that there might come into account. These were three of the main people. Uh, who had ideas. And Hocken is an interesting one. 
Uh, and um, I sort of rushed through this a bit. That one there, um, I'm not sure the guy actually thought that the feast was out there in um, um, Remuera Road, Green Lane Road, but he thought the painting was done from there. And that's another argument that is going on parallel with this, where was the painting done from? Um, that one, the top one is Hocken who bought the painting uh, and um, it said at the foot of Little Rangatoto, now reserved for quarry purposes. Um, now, that one is right over there in the uh, top right, at, but looking towards, all of these can look towards um, uh, Mount Hobson, Mount Eden, uh, Mount St John. They, they can all look there. Um, and, and we decided we'd sort of try to find out which one of these was most likely. So, so the painting, um, without its labels, but with the labels from the lithograph, sort of pointed to those two uh, manga there. And this was what um, Alum and um, Hocken came up with, this one way out in Remuera. And one of the things, of course, the problems that we have is that the mountains have been quarried and so they're not all visible as at this stage uh, as they were. Um, I, I managed to make a wedding cake uh, using uh, grids and interpolations and everything and that's all I could get. So I haven't got a proper mountain to actually put in there to show what Alan would have been looking at. So I've had to do that, uh, just put a little thing on the graphic. So he was actually looking at quite a large mountain um, and those areas there look likely candidates for the um, feast because they look flat and they look extensive. But as you'll see with the DEM, I don't think they stand up. Um, that's from a New Zealand graphic uh, done in uh, 19, uh, 1880. Um, and Mangarahiri is the one that the mountain you're seeing there. I think they've got it reversed because this is supposed to be Upland Road that drops way the hang down into that valley that we were looking at, um, that one there. I, I think that's how it's meant to be. Uh, and you can see the size of the mountain and you can see why um, Hocken would have thought that the mountain in the um, uh, painting was, was that one. Um, the Hochstetter maps actually give you some ideas because they, he doesn't give elevations, but he does give um, sort of a picture of what might have been there. And so you can try to do something with it. But when you take another view from um, Orake and look up across Hobson Bay, you can see where Little Rangatoto is there and Upland Road, and it's all just too rugged. So we decided, no, that wasn't going to be a site. He might have painted it there, but why would he go so far out, five kilometres, to paint the site? This one here, Mainston, which is um, put up more as a painting site, um, this, again, it looks as though you could have the land there. I, I think Ellerslie Racecourse may have been a, almost a swamp at that stage, hadn't been fully drained. So we put that one out as well. But you can actually see the mountains from there if you want to do your painting. Um, this, the map, if you've ever come across it is sort of the only thing we have to try to find what was actually on um, what was around the site and when you come closely into Mount Hobson, Mount St John there's a little scoria cone in there uh, which is where uh, diocesan school is and that's being quarried out so that's another one that sort of needs to be worked on um, and there are tough rings there are swamps all referred to by um, Hochstetter uh, and a swamp there um, and so maybe the amphitheatre that we're looking for was actually just in that area there. Um, it's, um, we, we sort of thought it might be larger than that um, and when you look at this um, and start putting Mount St John there rather than Mount Hobson it changes the whole of the perspective that you get in where this feast might have actually taken place because Captain Scott's farm now starts to have some meaning and researching it and mapping it, that's where it was, Corbett Scott Avenue um, in Manukau Road. Uh, and 
you can see that there's a juxtaposition between that and so therefore there is a, a case to say that we were really looking at um, the Kopoki Mount St John in the centre, uh, not Mangarahiri, uh, Little Rangatoto, and not certainly not Mount Hobson. Um, so you sort of get that sort of perspective if you want to into that photo, into that painting there. Um, the amphitheatre that we were looking for was probably that. And, and that uh, DEM sort of shows it quite clearly, but bearing in mind that this DEM is current. And so you've got all sorts of bits that are, sorry, I missed, hit the wrong one, um, bits of the terrain that are missing. Um, but the argument that the painting was actually done from by the Southern Motorway there on the uh, um, Market Road Bridge and it sort of bears out, yes, that it probably was right. Um, it seems to be the logical site for it, one or two or three. I've got a query on one or two of them. But the question came up, can you see three kings from there? Because you can't see anything now. You've got buildings, uh, you've got what have you. And so I, I thought, well, okay, I had to do something about uh, finding three kings. And the logical thing to do was to rush through this. That's what they looked like. Um, so again, you know, they've gone. If you've been up Three Kings Road, they've been quarried right out. Uh, and um, so to be able to recreate those as a, as a tin or a DEM would be great to have as part of this whole project. That's a view shed taken from that site on Monaco, uh, sorry, on uh, Market Road. And um, Three Kings, white is what you see from the star and black is what you don't see. And the uh, sacred mountain of Three Kings uh, is still there. Uh, you still see it. Uh, it's, oops, oh, oh, okay, it doesn't matter. We'll come, we'll come back to that. This slide's got out of context. Um, one of the things I wanted to have a look at as well, could this painting have been done from uh, the flank of Mount Hobson. And when you look across to the uh, Munga, and as now agreed that that's the centre of the painting, there's a case, I think, to say that Jenna could have painted uh, this from there. Um, and the visibility from here is exactly pretty well the same. So you can see the Three Kings. I couldn't on my laptop have a look and see if I could see Mount Albert, Owairaka, um, and uh, it just wouldn't w do it for me. But that's another question around that. So I wondered if that wasn't the site where it was painted from, because it's, it, you can sort of see it in front of you there now in, in the original painting. You can see uh, Te Kopuki there, and you can see the feast. Um, so Bruce Haywood, who was one of the three I had up there, his site is he selected that one and, and uh, you know we're pretty well agreed um, unless you get someone like me who disagrees but um, that that is the site. Um, that was um, a, the view shared analysis this has got out of sequence here um, and um, so, so when you have a look at what's happened there you see the sacred mountain is in green and the quarries have taken if all the others out up towards landscape road so, yes, you can see that from my site as well. Um, this was another thing that um, was a question of where was the swamp? And Hoxteader mentions one there. We don't actually know where it is, but if you come off the ridge of Market Road and come down, you can start mapping it somewhere around about there. Um, so that was put in by that uh, group of people, um, Hagen, um, someone who did that uh, lithograph. Um, and so is it possible that the site actually runs this way? Uh, because if you take the painting, my feeling is it may not be up the Great South Road, uh, Dilworth, but possibly we're in that white area there going down towards St Cuthbert's because that's relatively flat as well. So it needs more work. We sort of think you're there. Um, you know, you could, you could take that perspective and swing the painting around. And so, you know, the question is, 
are we, are we there or are we not? And maybe we aren't. Um, but some people will say yes. Uh, but the sort of fascination of this whole project uh, does go on.